What up, what up? Welcome to the Sneaker History Podcast. My name is Nick Ingvall. I'm with my guys, Mike and Robbie. We're already having a good time with this episode, but we're going to get into the greatest all-star sneakers of all time. And I'm just going to start out by putting you guys on the hot seat. When somebody asks you, what's the best all-star shoe of all time? What comes to mind? Immediately just blanked. <laughs> no, I mean, it's an easy, easy answer for me. It's It's got to be the Galaxy Foam Posit. I mean, that's such a, oh, duh, that's the fucking, it's, it is the answer, though. It's really, the ter- from anybody who liked shoes before that All-Star game, what was it, 2011? Yeah. The All-Star game? 2012, 2012, 2012. 2012 yeah. yeah. Um, so everybody who collected shoes before 2012, there's a lot of us, we were sewer people, like rats. <laughs> and then people. that day hit, the and then everybody knew, like, Everybody knew that Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles lived down there. And then, like, people came into our sewers. And then, like, it, it changed the game. And I know the Jeff Staple Pigeon Dunk changed the game. Um, yeah, that there just, you go. That just, the Pigeon Dunk just messed stuff up. That didn't, like. Yeah, that just was nonsense. It, like, was, it, was, it was hot topic news. The Galaxy Foam yeah. Posit literally got people to buy shoes who had never. It's crazy. You can go on a whole episode about why the Foam Posit won galaxy but just it got everybody in the game who had been out of the game back into the game starting the game starting a relay team anything you could do to get in the game was to get those galaxy phone posits i mean yeah i i think that's kind of just the overall answer i think you're right like i I was trying to find a way not to say that too but when you put in that perspective uh i can even take a step further i think that whole pack i mean clearly the phone was the front runner like the the show pony of that group but things like the LeBron 9, the Kobe 7 would recently re-release KD4. Those are shoes I think they could release them every year for the next 10 years for All-Star and people be okay, you know, buying them. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most unforgettable years for All-Star Weekend releases. I mean, I, so personally, I was living in L.A. at the time and I went to Fox Hills Mall and tried to I tried to get foams. But they had already, I think like the foams were at foot action and they had already like basically set up a line when I got there the day before. And I was just like, I'm not going to sit in line, but I was able to actually get the, uh, the Orlando Nike air flight ones, the penny shoe of that same one that one. Yeah. It's like one of my favorites of all time. Like I just love, I mean, the penny line to me is, is super dope, but like that shoe was like. The crossover of like Jordan wearing the shoe, that whole story, you know, like one of the few, the only signature shoe from another athlete that Jordan ever wore was the flight one. And then like they came out with that Orlando colorway, which wasn't really an original colorway, but like it was perfect, right? It was like the Orlando colors was just perfect on that shoe to me. So, so I would, I, I would agree that, that, that weekend, definitely the Ninja Turtles analogy is perfect. Like <laughs> It like brought people out that didn't, you know, it also probably even kicked off a lot of the resell, the the craziness of reselling, right? It used to be nuanced. You used to have like a dedicated group of people you were selling to on the forums. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, these foams will sell for like, remember there was somebody that was trying to trade like an old car Camry. for that foam, right? They wanted yeah, to trade their like Camry that. for yeah. the freaking foams. I'm like, what is happening? That's yeah. between I mean, them that's and where it. you could get like... You would negotiate Pac-Man SBs for like 500 bucks. Yeah. And then the phone yeah. posit Galaxy came out. And now we're talking instantly in the thousands. Just to put a, a quick note on that. So technically the Chicago Jordan 1, the Black Cement 3 are both shoes MJ wore in the All-Star game. So those two mm-hmm. both definitely, they count, right? But what's interesting mm-hmm. about both of those shoes in particular in MJ's career is that there's so many stories that Nike's told about the Jordan one, you know, this in history, right? That one typically the all-star appearance, it being an all-star shoe along with the Jordan three typically is just forgotten. No one ever mentions like the, Oh, you know, that's, that was the all-star shoe. MJ's first all-star shoe. No one's ever said that in like marketing. I feel like, yeah. um, but that was the super clean, you know, the white stars on the side, NBA jerseys, um, the all-star jerseys, you know, there's such a clean iconic time with two of like the five best shoes ever made. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Worn exactly. by the best player. No one ever brings it up. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, I, I did see like a list of like the best, you know, uh, I mean, there's tons of lists out there, right? But like the best 
shoe for each year or something. And one thing I thought was interesting is like you start into the list and it's like basically from 85 till what, 2000, oh, what, yeah, 2003? When, when, when did the, uh, the Jordan 8s come out? Like the Aqua 8s were his, I mean, even beyond that though, right? Because he wore the Columbias. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in in you know like two thousand one or whatever. The, right? Ninety three was the Aqua. or ninety six. I mean, yeah, ninety three Aqua was ninety six with the Columbia's. Yeah. So like Jordan kind of became the face of of like All Star Weekend shoes For sure. until that Galaxy moment like forced everybody to pay attention. There were definitely people that that also wore other shoes. Kobe in the in the you know Crazy Eights or KB Eight whatever um, back then. T Max you know, doing the, the mismatch pair, like Chris Weber and the Dada's like there were a lot of shoes before that, but I think culturally, you know, 2012 just like changed everything about the way all the brands think about all-star weekend, which it was the perfect storm because fashion wise, it was, you know, that was a time where everybody started, you know, space and like galaxy print, uh, Everyone wearing those, you know, weird NASA shirts and stuff like that. You go to Zoomies or whatever. They always had those kind of, again, those space-themed things. And you put that together with, you know, foam pots were super hot at the time. Nike basketball was super hot at the time. Although, like you said, we were kind of our little niche group going buying them. Now you took this super fashionable thing in the Galaxy print, put it on super popular shoes. You, It, it was one of those – it was almost like a – merging of of cultures or you know everything in the front of fashions and shoes it, that was the first time it happened i feel like and they weren't sure what to do with it so it was like crap now we have these out of the ordinary lines because now pigeon dunks was one line in one place the galaxy pack was pick a spot in the u.s that had these shoes you had yeah. some kind of like mayhem going on i mean no. orlando they shut it down where it originated because yeah. of all the nonsense but House of Hoops everywhere was like a it's, mess. It's laughable. Nick tried to go to a, like a, a, a foot action or right or a champs. Like nowadays, a shoe that rare, getting laughed at. You think you can go do a store like that and just get yeah that hot of right. a shoe? Like, who, what are you smoking? Like back then, <laughs> I, I remember um, trying to call a Foot Locker in Minneapolis for. Um, might have been those big bangs, Mike. Um, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, you guys have these? They're like. No, like what? The, and that was the first time I was ever like, no. What do you mean? Like you don't have a pair of yeah. LeBrons? Like I see my outlets all the time. Like what do you mean you don't have the Dude, LeBrons? It's yeah. crazy. Nuts. I called my old boss at at Champs. I remember because I just left. I, that was what two months after me graduating college. I just left Champs in Waco. And I'll call it. And they're like, Dude, we didn't even get them. I think the the foot action did, and they were already like gone at that point. I'm like, God, I'll drive three hours to come get them. But uh, no love there. No luck. Yeah, man. I think the other thing, too, to that that people should know about kind of all star sneakers is the idea of putting like crazy colors on your shoes did not really fly in the NBA, even on all star weekend. You know, there's the story of Allen Iverson in 2000 in Oakland, the yellow pair with a yeah. blue toe. He didn't even fuck with the shoe, so he didn't even wear it. Reebok made a special shoe for that, released it, you know, I. Like it basically screws the release because if, back then, if you didn't see your favorite player in the shoe, they didn't want to wear it. You didn't want to wear it, right? Yeah. So, like, that's that's two thousand. That's like the the after Jordan era, not after, but like the the fadeaway of Jordan into the next generation of sneaker releases for for All Star Weekend. And like, you're still having players that are like the no a yellow sh- like Warriors colors. Nah, I'm good, fam. Like. <laughs> And I think that says a lot about the direction that it all took, right? Because even Kobe that next year, right? I think it was 2001 that that it was Kobe and Jordan and Kobe yeah. wore the true blues. And to me, like, that was like such a dope moment because it was like really, truly passing of the torch of like between MJ and Kobe in a lot of 2001, ways. No, 2001, he wore the Kobe, the sunshine oh, yes. pair. Yeah, 2002 then, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah next yeah, year. Yeah. I was just, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, I ain't wearing this crap no more. He's yeah. like, I ain't doing this no more, Joe. But the sunshine yep. matches the Lakers' color. It, it, it made is. sense yeah. from yeah, that totally. point of view. Well, because right? it's all team jerseys still, but you notice that, Nick, you're, you're, you're perfectly right on, though, because it was like, all right, I'm wearing my team jersey. I want my team colors. But when it switched to, uh, hey, we're going to have these specific East-West jerseys where West was always red, yeah. East was always blue. Everything had 
LeBron when he was the Cavaliers. Blue jersey, blue shoe. Kobe had the red uh, five at the time. D Rose, black if you're shoe. Listening, if you're listening, Mike just held oh, up the, shit. the LeBron was, All Star sevens. My bad. Yeah, I should probably say that. <laughs> so yeah, so LeBron All Star seven 2010. Uh, I think this was was it D Rose won MVP 2010. 2009, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So yeah. he, same deal. All, yeah. like, blue logo. Like, he is, these are the 1.5s, by the way, the all-star 1.5s of D-Rose. And everything was based on those jerseys still. It wasn't until 2012 where they're like, let's get these colors and get wild out here. Well, and if I remember right, so so before, because I know everybody listening is losing their mind right now because I said 2002, and, and the Kobe MJ was 2003 because it was <laughs> MJ's last year, right? Yeah. But... I think, too, like there was like an intentional shift away from the the standard colors. And that mm-hmm. year that Rose, he played the first quarter, a little more than the first quarter in the the yellow Rose one. Right. The, yeah. His high school. And, colors, right. And then his. Yeah. And like the shoe is bright yellow. I have them mm-hmm. here. I, I, well, Simeons. I should have grabbed Simeons. Yeah, yep. Simeons. And and to me, that's one of my favorite shoes because it was like the first time I think Adidas ever was like, fuck it, let's just do something wild. Yeah. And then like they also did the, oh, well, people probably won't buy that crazy colorway. So let's do a black and like, but the details on that shoe, Mike, you should do a review on that shoe because the yeah. details on that shoe are some of the best all-star ever. Like 3M stars like in that ball upper. ball on the back kind of looking to yeah, it. Yeah, like- that's an amazing shoe to me. Yeah. Is that the retro one? Or is no, that this the, is original? the original? Nice. So nice. shout out to uh, if you guys listen to our, our buddies out in Canada from the Sneaker Podcast. Shout out to Chris Chu. He's, he sent me these over a couple years nice. ago. Yeah. So yeah, this thing's awesome. It's about a half size small, but I make it work. <laughs> so the other shoe that I think like kind of in that same era, right, is the Wheat LeBron Zoom Generation, mm-hmm. right? Like that's. First All Star Weekend for LeBron that he didn't make, so that yeah, that, he he played the rookie exactly sophomore rookie game, game yeah. against one Chris Kamen. Let's just put it out there, Kamen. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have that shoe too, Mike. Funny bringing up all these shoes. I'm like, damn, I have either have had or have that. Um, that the that was a crazy one too, and I think also that's when no, I know for a fact um, Jordan Brand was using Mellow to push the Jordan 19, right? So you have, mm-hmm. like, the young guy, like, literally the youngest guy, you know, the yeah. youngest guy on the block <laughs> yep. testing out the new model. Um, and it's just... I don't think you can really wear the AZG wheat unless you're, like, looking for a particular, like, boot replacement. Like yeah, a unless you're, if your Tims are in the shop and you need, a, like, a <laughs> rental vehicle, there you go. You got some <laughs> AZG's wheats. <laughs> But they those were a sick. couple times, bro. If your Tims are in the shop, we get you got some, yeah. you got other issues. <laughs> you didn't buy real Tims. You didn't get the double soles, did you? That's the that's the problem. <laughs> but I mean, that brings really it didn't usher in. Well, maybe it did usher in. This has to be a funny little look back. But did did like two thousand three with that generational talent all star draft? Oh, not all star draft, but you know NBA draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did they like? start the, all the crazy colorways actually coming out i mean that, that might have been the first that, year it was that class because lebron was the spearhead of that right and lebron too they released the you know the gray royal blue and white one he wore the, for the all-star game and they released it they released every shoe lebron's ever worn not every shoe because the past couple of years they've kind of gotten away from it right or it's yeah. or it's been a tie in with like you know he's wearing the Kith LeBron 15s instead of an All Star 15 you know, but since LeBron started, all the shoes and that's what 21 years now. Yeah, I can't think of like there wasn't okay so the 2K3 obviously was in 2003. There wasn't like a 2K2. There wasn't like a, a pre shoe to that. There wasn't like specific. There wasn't like a penny four or like a penny five you know all-star colorway mm. there's always just the shoes penny player x war and in the all-star game yeah. but that shoe was also typically like mj just the shoe he wore all season right like the bread three was wore all year was well, born all year yeah. I'll three. Say nike okay i'm gonna take it back when did when did kobe one release like nike's kobe one 
I can't remember what year. They're like two thousand uh, six. Six, yeah. They started with they started with a all star color. Then it was white and red. Like so well, LeBron's oh three. So that LeBron's predates oh, that by no, three years. Right. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, I can't think of one yeah. thing. Yeah, you're right. Wait, I LeBron, can't think. LeBron is. LeBron is actually 04, right? Because it was 03, 04. Yeah, season. you're right. Yeah. 03, 04. So, but still so the, was a year before. That's a good point, though, Robbie, because if you think about, like, they had the the rookie game or the, what is it? Rookie the rising sophomore. Stars, rising star and rookie right? versus yeah. sophomores, whatever it is. They had, they had that game when I was in high school, which, like, 96. I graduated in 97. So I remember watching that on a friend's. We didn't have cable. So I re- went to a friend's house because he had – ESPN or, or whatever it was on TNT yeah. or it might even been on like WG in Chicago back then because <laughs> it was like everything was on that. But like to your point, the lineup for the 2004 rookies is Carmelo Anthony, Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Jarvis Hayes, Jarvis Kirk Hayes. Heinrich, Josh Howard, Chris Kaman, and Adonis Haslam. I mean, I don't think prior to that with the exception of 98 and Kobe coming into the league. But remember, Kobe's first year was not as expected, right? Like people yeah. were kind of let down by his first year because mm-hmm. he was he was 18 years old, you know? And yeah, LeBron was too. But like LeBron had already seen people drafted in high school go into the league. Kevin Garnett was not like a superstar out of the gates. It took him half a season to get rolling. Like so prior to that, all those rookies didn't get the same level of like – elevation from the league and i think like your i think your to your point 2004 was like the first time not only did the brands be like hey our rookie guys are the future of this let's give them shoes but i feel like the league even was like hey lebron's here we got to make a big deal about this and get these guys on you know like their shine as well but that's interesting because i definitely don't i've been thinking real hard and i can't think of one shoe or one Ballsy, athlete, man. the closest I could get. So the draft before, right, was Amari Stoudemire. He was like the big, not the big, but like, yeah, yeah. Um, people wanted Amari Stoudemire. He did, he wore, I can't even think what that fool wear, like some Nike, but like no effort at all for yeah. anybody. And even if you were an established athlete, let's say this for a random example, the Zoom Flight 96, Jason Kidd, all-star game, right? That's just the same shoe you could buy in the store. That's just the same shoe he's been wearing all season in his Dallas Mavericks colorway, right? That's yeah. just like the Gary no Payton change. gloves, um, all of the Penny Hardaway shoes. I'm trying to think yeah. of anybody not named Michael Jordan. Um, Adidas wasn't putting signature shoes out like that. In the, I mean, yeah, yeah no. the only one, the only one I could think of would be like Scottie Pippen in the Maestro in like '94. But but the reason that that even happened is because MJ was retired and playing baseball right yeah. so like like the other guys that got him you know like i'm a king's fan so mitch richmond got a bunch of crazy stuff got some jordan pe's but like none of those shoes were you know highlighted you know they were still team colors or jersey matched pretty low-key like to your point oh. about the Nin- ninja turtles reference right you had to be you had to be into sneakers to be paying attention to most of the shoes yeah. prior to the early 2000s so <laughs> I want to apologize to Vince Carter really quick. He was so big at that time. Vince Carter was right before LeBron started LeBroning. And there was no, like, I was like, maybe Vince is the one guy who had a special all star colorway released before LeBron. No. Well, the white and red. Uh, he was the one person, the one like, person who could have on Nike before 2003, 2004 would have been Vince Carter well, and nothing. When was T Max mismatch? T Mac 3? It's got to be like 02, 03, right? Yeah, but he wore each of so he mismatched two GR shoes that had just True, he, yeah. he chose just to do I'm that. Reaching, I'm reaching. <laughs> no, but I mean, but I think that's like maybe. The, I mean, I don't want to give too much credit to Dada and Chris Weber, but like the Chrome C Dubs <laughs> is right around that time too. One right? year earlier. Like, yeah, it's like the first kind of like what the hell are they doing? Shoe. <laughs> we got spinners on this sucker. <laughs> but no, Mike, you were onto yeah. something almost. But they, so I, I bought both of them and I did it. You could buy the blue I know, one. A lot of people did. And yeah. the red one. Yeah. And just that's the way it like it wasn't like a special edition. Yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna mess with you. Say, did you go back and bring them back and say, hey, then we yeah, have one shoe I, in this box. I, think, I remember getting. <laughs> I remember getting rid of those and being like, 
Should I get rid of these? I haven't worn these bright red or bright blue patent leather cracking T Mac three hey, in about fifteen years. Someone was wearing years. a sneaker con in December, bro. Someone They're wore the gone. mismatched pair of sneaker con. I was like, that was the coolest thing I saw on someone's feet that day. <laughs> that is that is pretty dope because it's pretty rare at this point. Exactly. Right? No yeah. one, you didn't see yeah. that, and I was like, that is the coolest person I've seen all day. Everyone else was wearing the same thing. <laughs> People are like going back through old episodes right now and being like, Nick said he hated that. So he's being corny right now because I'm giving props to that kid. But hey, we almost got four episodes. Props. Good luck finding I, that episode. I still have a hard time wearing mismatched shoes. I wear the I wore the Swiper Air Max ones like last month or whatever, and it just looks weird on my feet. Like I don't know why. Like I, I bought them because I want to support the hometown guy, you know. But like I don't know. I can't do it. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So going back to the Galaxy conversation. The fours, the KD fours released today when we're mm-hmm. recording this, yeah, and sold out everywhere, pretty quickly. We're gone from even the retail sites that I saw they were originally available on. That changed the trajectory of All Star, like from a marketing perspective. It was like Nike put a bunch of money into it, and everybody realized we got to put a, t- a bunch of money into this and make it a big deal. But like one thing that I think kind of got messed up from that moment is Nike also did like the area 72 stuff the following year, right? We're Houston. But like a lot of those don't really like align. They're like, there's not separation between the galaxy and the area 72 stuff in my mind. Other than that, like weird Barkley pot. The, was the it a Barkley? Yeah, yeah. That's the only one I remember from the area 72 stuff. Uh, like, the, the LeBron I remember, was solid. But that that so, pops into my head. Yeah. Really funny Barkley Posit story. The foam Posit one Galaxy was so big. The next year, my friend bought a pair of Galaxy. I think about two pairs of Galaxy Posits. And I was like, oh, yeah, those are going to be like really popular. And they're going to be really big. Last year's were huge. I can't see why these dirty. won't be. <laughs> I, mean, I think he still has one of them. Definitely still has one of them. I mean, but, um, they started slapping Galaxy on everything at that point, though. Remember, you had the Zoom man, uh, uh, rookie phones. I that, had, I had three. I had all three. I worked at House of Hoops at the time. I still had the LeBron tens um, and the uh, and the Kobe's eight pizzas. I call them. It looks like some like splatter the, pizza oh, all over the Mars like, Kobe eights. <laughs> um, and I had the KD ones, but. I sold every KD. I haven't owned a KD shoe since he went to the Warriors. Well, KD five just sucked. Like I don't know why he went straight bad. high top. Like, but yeah, the same the thing. Shoe. Oh, the KD four did so well. This one's gonna do great. <laughs> and then, but I will say, all pow, KD has had so many good All Star shoes that those models ultimately get remind, reminded fondly, even oh, yeah. if yeah, I wouldn't fondle that shoe. They're they're bad. <laughs> Please don't fondle shoes, anybody. <laughs> if you listen to this, this is a PSA from us. Don't fondle your shoes. <laughs> I wouldn't rub that tongue. Um, no. But just know that they were cheap, and they were cheap. Oh, yeah. That's not, a, that's not a misspeak. Yeah. They were cheap, mainly made, and they were cheaply priced. But So let's look at it, though. So we had a we had a solid run. I thought the run was longer. I was doing like I was researching for a video I was doing. I didn't realize that the run of All Star Shoes, as we finally remember it, was only from 2012 to like maybe 2016 before it fell off the like the the, the map. Like it just. And I was gonna kind of pose the question to you guys because I brought it up in a, in a in a video. Do you think Nike, you know, being part of you know the deal to have basically players wear anything they want? Did it water down sneaker releases to where now they're like, eh, we don't have to just focus on All Star. We can throw out this you know, whatever, you know, shoe LeBron will wear it on a random Tuesday night or Katie will wear it on a random primetime game. Go ahead, Robbie. Nick's ears are smoking. Y- yeah, <laughs> my brain is like... Well, they never wear them anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking is like the da- the downside is like it's one and done, right? Mm-hmm. And like I might be a bad sports fan for saying this, but like... I don't know. Like, I haven't really cared enough about the All Star Game or All Star Weekend festivities oh, yeah. to pay attention to all the stuff to to know exactly. Yes, I work yeah. in sneakers. We do this show. I pay attention to it. But like, even before we started recording, I'm just thinking like the best shoe I can think of after those years 
is a shoe I completely forgot, which is the the Bape Dame Four collab that Adidas did because there was like was there three color? There was a green, the red, and a black, Blue? right? Black, 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 yeah. yeah. But like, you know, like th- there hasn't been connectivity outside of the the weekend, right? And I think that's the biggest thing, like that is missing. Where the like games before are bad. we would talk about it. They, well, yeah, the well, games yeah, are bad, the games but like are terrible. But like they're trying to get so many people in. The guys change at halftime or pregame or whatever. So there's like six shoes releasing, you know, like I know this is exaggerating and I'm just being a prick about it, but like if a guy plays, for instance, last year, like last year? No, two years ago. LaMelo Ball. When did the 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 um the first LaMelo shoe come out because he played in the Rick and Morty pair. It had to be two, two years. Two, Couldn't have been last year, right? No, it was not last year. It must have been. No, the year it's, two, it's two years ago. Yeah. I'm so he, he played in the rookie game in the Rick and Morty pair, right? Mm-hmm. The, the orange and green yeah. or red and green pair. And then played in a purple pair for like pre- 2022 for like, sorry not to cut you off 2022 definitively he wore the rick okay. and morty mismatches there go. yeah sorry and then he had another purple pair of his signature shoe right which i think like for for what puma's doing and what he's been doing it's perfect loud colors you know we talked about in a previous episode though the shoe doesn't look significantly different different enough year to year and i think the brands fall into that trap of like oh we got to make something bright and colorful but like don't don't do the same bright and colorful, you know, like, yeah, if you know, that's the one thing that Nike did really well in those early years of of like the come up of all star shoes, I would say. Right. Like there was something even thinking all about time. like the LeBron seven you pulled out mm-hmm. that shoe being blue, the rest of the shoes being red and like having the back and forth between the east and the west like yeah. that, that like gave people like more understanding and connection to the mm-hmm. game itself, even if the yeah. game, you know, like. Look, you get to see a ton of highlights. It's basically watching a sports center, you know, so top, top, top ten. <laughs> it's it's a three hour top ten, you know, <laughs> show basically. Well, it's there could have been some shoes. Like I said, they didn't have any connectivity to like the jersey or anything. But like the LeBron sixteen, the Atmos uh, Air Max One, that could have been a huge shoe, I think. But he took it off and switched into the uh, Watch the Throne sixteens. So again, you now you're like splitting at this point. Like, well, you that one could have been huge because animal print on anything referencing Atmos, that's easy money right there. But he switched into again, watch the throne for that whole LeBron watch thing that was going on for a while, and it's like, which which was cool, yeah. yeah. But it's like, how many of us though. are buying? How many of us are going to buy multiple LeBrons coming out of a you know weekend? <laughs> it costs too much. <laughs> no, but, Only get one. <laughs> no, yeah. so literally, because this is very. Um, it's in line with Nick's point he just made about who's buying multiple LeBrons. 2015, the LeBron 12 low LeBron old Palmer was debuted at All-Star Weekend. And that shit drove me nuts. I wanted that shoe so bad. And it just came out like three years ago. Did you I get did. it? The Hell no, one? I didn't. It was 90 Actually, bucks. No, I do have it. <laughs> I do have like a pair of LeBron. No, no, no. I have the LeBron 9 LeBron. I have the good ones. Oh, wait. What did you say? The 12... Well, not the 12 low debuted all star 2015, and that oh. one still because you could buy those ones. That yeah, one got people you said hyped. 12. I didn't catch that. <laughs> the 12 low, it was a good looking one, but yeah, I got myself excited. The the nine sample finally released like two years ago, and I bought them craps at retail, I believe. So, Nick, people do buy LeBron. I don't know about multiple pairs, but if the right one comes out, oh, yeah, I still wish I wasn't like. I make fun of Mike all the time with the blue jeans and, and basketball <laughs> shoes. I purposely kept myself from buying the South Beach 8s because I'm like, I'm not going to wear these shits with blue jeans. Um, Come on, Wale. <laughs> you can do it. And I also <laughs> have the Lakers LeBron 8 retro. I already bought the Hardwood Classic. It's so hard once you're at this point of shoes. Like, do I need three LeBron 8 retros? All suede? All three of them are suede? Okay, this no. is my thing. Is okay, so I'll tell you this. This is sorry. This is a weird side tangent, but and I hate for it to even sound this way, but it, but it has to be because I just know the way people are. Is that reason I buy LeBron retros at the clip I do is because if whenever he retires, 
or God forbid anything happens to him, I'm not going to be sitting there paying these stupid prices that a-holes did when Kobe passed away. I LeBron's been one of my favorite players since he got into the league, and I'm not going to be sitting in line with a bunch of jack wagons if whenever he leaves the game trying to get shoes. Like, no, I've been doing this for a minute. Leave me alone. Pause. <laughs> I'm, I'm 35 years old. I don't have to say pause. I pay bills. <laughs> I hear you though. Like, I think that that's my logic with the LeBron stuff too. Like, I haven't picked up much as much as you, but you know, it's it's. It's important stuff to me personally. It's important mm-hmm. stuff to like historically and like ideally, I know this is not realistic, but ideally I do have like the same thing with Jordans, right? I'd love to have like one through 30. I would love to have like one through 22, 22, 23, 24 or whatever it takes yeah. for LeBron to run through them all. But also like that's even a slippery slope because you get into the soldier line, you get into the I'll stay at main you know, line. It's too much work. I, you know, <laughs> but, but you, but that's the thing. Like, you know, like LeBron hit that game winner in the soldier three, uh, right? Soldier two, like soul collector did a collab on the, you yeah. know, like those things are all super important too, for, to me. Totally so right. it's, it's like, I'm like just slippery slope with all these things where I'm like, I don't, I should, probably shouldn't even think about it or even be doing this podcast <laughs> because I just like start looking at like, oh, damn, I did love that shoe when it came out. Dude, wonder, wonder if anybody's got a pair of those that they need to get rid of, you know, <laughs> eBay deep dive. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, all right. Last question, because we're, we're definitely pushing the clock here. Anything like in the last like three years that like comes to mind outside of the LaMelo ball stuff. Can you think of a shoe that came out in the last three years or this year that you actually would consider buying if it's available? I know my answer right away. So I thought about this. I need four years, but, um, the, and Mike went to the all-star game, the 2020, the red, the unite Jordan three, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the red cement Jordan three. I've said a couple of times on this podcast, if you like Jordan threes and you like shoes and you don't like that shoe, get your head out of your own butt. Cause like that shoe was like the fever dream of Jordan three fans for myself included for a really, really long time. And, I, and I bought them at retail. It that, was for a while. Yeah. I'm mad at myself. Cause in Chicago, I had the unite pair. They were just sitting at the big Nike store and I was just like, I'm never going to wear this. I've never been a big all red shoe fan. <laughs> I was like, why didn't I just buy this? I, was, I, wear I, them. Like, I, I kicked myself for not buying it because I actually had to, like I said, a different back tab for yeah. being in Chicago. Yeah. I'm like, stupid. I man. forgot you went to Chicago for All-Star. What, wait, what did you go there for? You had like, uh, an event to go to, right? Yeah, it was with uh, with Wear Testers. They did like a, oh, yeah, like a right. basketball game yeah, and stuff. And uh, yep. cool, cold as freaking balls. And then two months later, COVID happened. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm glad I made it out. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, man. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, I honestly can't really think of anything that, like, I would have mm-hmm. to have. Like, I, I actually would like to have that Rick and Morty LaMelo shoe just as, like, hey, first shoe in the league. This yeah. guy's going to be special. It'd be nice to have. But, like, I don't know. Like, it's just not something I'm – I feel like enough people – there was probably enough of them produced and enough people will forget about it that yeah, I'll pick it up for cheap down the road. I mean, I have, there's nothing. Only thing I can think of, like I'm looking at this year's lineup, which is whoever at Nike just like decided that was a, that was the move. Go take a six week vacation. Just come back to get your mind right. But uh, you know, Robbie talk jokes that this becomes the AE one podcast. But he's the he's the best all star shoe that's coming out right now. I mean, I like yeah. the kind of like bronze iridescent look. It's dope. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that's definitely this year's like winning shoe to me. Easily. I mean, LeBron didn't have one coming out for adults. It's only a grade school, which I guess the way it looks, it makes sense. But I was like, there's no adult LeBron. Uh, KD, I don't understand it. I think Kyrie, if he were to drop his actual shoe, I think it would be a hit. But he's not even an all-star this year, right? Or my, I don't think so. I don't think he's an all-star this year. Um, but yeah, there's nothing that's like, like really, I, don't, I do not understand the thought or purpose of what they did with the GT line. Yeah, I was like, just you should just release those shoes and put them in All Star colors. Give us the Foam Max, give us the J Kid, give us that, uh, that uh, those other shoes, and give them, but give us All Star colors, just old retros. But if you can't think of nothing good, just don't say nothing at all. 
So, so I disagree with you a little bit on that. I think that they should actually release the retros and the new version, the GT line together. Like they don't, yeah, not as a good. pack, not as a pack where you got to buy both of them, but like give us both, right? Yeah. Because you you're never gonna like we're the only people on the planet and the you know few thousand people that are gonna listen to this episode that actually know those stories without somebody else telling it. Yeah. The average person, the the young sneakerhead is not going to look at that shoe and be like, oh, shit, I remember 1990 whatever when so-and-so wore that shoe. There's no connection between like the past and the present or the future with these yeah. releases unless you do some sort of a crossover you between a them, right? To them. Yeah, yeah, you got to do something for them. It's just wild to me. I was like, man, like, and then I guess Adidas is quietly doing like those kind of Kobe tributes with the Crazy 8 and uh, Crazy 1 or Kobe 1 and KB8, you know, depending on who you are, what you call it. <laughs> Uh, but they didn't, they, they kind of dropped the ball. I mean, with the, I mean, it sold out, so it was good for them. I mean, that's all that matters to them, but the crazy eight, it was supposed to drop what today. They ended up dropping it like two weeks ago, randomly on their website. Someone literally is drunk in their website office, just hitting the release button and not saying anything. They, I get a list of releases that look back and like, yo, this released literally two weeks earlier than it should have. Like, what are y'all doing over there? That's Sorry. actually crazy. I didn't realize that they dropped today. Yeah. Well, no, they dropped before. They dropped literally. I mean, yeah, I didn't really realize yeah. they dropped before today. I, I, was like, oh, I, mean, I, I wasn't looking for them, but. Well, it's one of those ones that you know that the hardcore Kobe collector out there is going to do it. You could, I mean, you can't tell the story per se, but you put those patches on there for a reason. You could have released it during an All-Star, gave you guys a little bit of hype to go along with the AU one Like, whoever's running their marketing literally is like a drum toddler. <laughs> yeah, I mean the AE one we, 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 you did is bring it up, and that one should get brought up. It's probably the best shoe, and I would buy that colorway if I could find it. I refuse to wear New Balance hoops, but they have a gamer tag pack of the nice. two way, the Hezzy Low, and the Fresh Foam BB um, in purple, purple, orange, and green, yeah. respectively. They look really, really cool. Like Kawhi's gonna look really, I and mean, he'll probably wear his own. I mean, okay. Yeah, the Kawhi Four comes out already in low top, so he'll be wearing that one most likely. Yeah, yeah. so those will look cool on court. I mean, I'm thinking, did Jamal Murray make the All Star? I don't think Jamal nope. Murray made the All Star game. No, nope. he nope. thinking um, missing the games probably. So I think it's just Kawhi is the only like New Balance athlete wearing those. But um, Mike brought up the Adidas stuff. Yeah, it definitely could like the Crazy Eight could have been handled a little bit better. Um, the KD Four and Nick said he tried to get that. Mike, you did not try to get that. Which one? The KD4. KD4 All-Star. No, I literally forgot about it, but I'm glad I didn't. I just would have been upset because it just sold out immediately. Yeah, I didn't try. Don't care. Don't try. It's a gorgeous shoe, though. I'm not stupid. But then Puma <laughs> also has the Porsche collaborations coming out this weekend. Um, uh, All Pro Nitro and uh, MBO3 and Black and Yellow. Those are pretty cool. Um, the Devin Booker Mirage colorway finally comes out the debut colorway of the book one um that's the 17th technically um then you have of course the offerings from jaw lebron kd Giannis. is john even an all-star this year? no no he's he's anyway. never mind yeah he missed too many games and yeah never mind don't and he's hurt me. he's not playing anymore the rest of the season um yeah but like all of those those are like the big four right uh, nike lebron kd uh the big four at Nike, Giannis, LeBron, Katie, and um, and uh, I just said his name, Jaw. All four of those shoes are like nothing I would buy. Not particularly in a bad way, but not in a Robbie way. Whoa. So those are just some other releases coming out this weekend, listener. If you're curious what else is coming out, um, there's something from everybody, from every brand, whatever your high school is, whatever your college is, you can get an all-star shoe from somebody for yourself this weekend but yeah. do you want them yeah that's that's the question want, yeah. other than other than the ae i think that's pretty unanimous that that I mean, shoe's doing well everyone's going after the jordan four i mean the 85 burgundy metallics were going to come out but they got pushed back like a few months but everyone's going after the jordan fours this weekend i mean it's i mean there's, there's nothing everything else i'll be able to go back in the middle of march and go pick it up from them Except for the AE1, but everything else, I'll be able to go pick up random Foot Locker on sale. Yeah, I think so, too. 
All right, so I want to start a new thing on on the episodes, <laughs> and uh, I want to end every episode with a question. And this is not for you guys, but I want you to think about it, and you can tell me if you if you know off the top of your head after we get <laughs> off. Before you tell people how to, uh, let's call this the last shot. We'll say. If you make okay. it to the last shot, you got to answer this question. So, we talked about the Barkley foam posit, the Barkley. What is it? The Barkley Barkley posit foam posit Mac Barkley posit. Yeah. This isn't a dunk contest episode. It'll give you a little hints at the question, but who wore that shoe in 2013? If you know, definitely join the Discord. We'll, we'll put a link in the description. Hit us up on social wherever, and guys, let them know how they can find you outside of the show. I, now I can't remember where I'm at. I'm trying to think about that question now. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, I'm here, Sneaker History, but you can find me on Instagram and, uh, and anywhere that's not Twitter at MadWatcher789. You can find me on YouTube at Mike Guillory. Robbie, where you at, buddy? You can find me at R-A-H-B-E-E-702. Uh, I don't know. Who, I mean, at- I can kind of see who can. <laughs> I can kind of imagine who wore that shoe. See, look, you're thinking about it, too. I'm like, I have no <laughs> idea, though. It's a tough one. It's a tough one because we just forget about that whole weekend, basically. But you can find me at Nick Ingvall everywhere. I want to give a little shout out to uh, Chris Elliott, Just Elliott on Instagram, and Rennick Bowman. Rennick Bowman on Instagram. They are working for the Pacers now. I used to work with them at Finish Line oh, back nice. in the day. And all of the All Star Weekend stuff in Indiana has me fucking jealous. I wish I was there this year. So if you're headed there, I hope you have a good time. Give those guys a follow and tell them they're fucking killing it out there and yeah appreciate y'all for walking with us and we'll catch you on the next one peace see ya